Y'all know how we do it. I'm so excited about this week. Um, I've been trying to keep my dreams alive and I'm trying to stay alive. And you know what? My fatherhood forum, they are right there with me, keeping me alive. So this week we are going to measuring fatherhood. That's what we're going to do. And for some reason, my computer wants to update, but not today, not today. We're going to let you do that after I go get my frappe from Mr. Mrs. Sharon uh, Phoenix. Say. Anyway, um, you guys know what I want you to do. Tune in so we can get out of the way the song of the day by Derek Derek Hadi. Daddy loves you. And let us know if you guys like it as much as we do. Here we go. Right now, you're too young to understand. They got you thinking that your daddy's not a good man. Every time he calls, he's told you're asleep. Here and there, he sends a card you never see. All you know is that your daddy's long gone. Blinded by the dirt that's been thrown at him so long. So long. He's trying hard to reach you. Someone is fighting that. He's lost his stamina, but he's still fighting back. He wants to talk to you to see how you been. He's really struggling to reach his best friend. Don't know what else to say. I'm just a messenger. He told me to tell you. Daddy loves you. What would you do if you knew that your daddy loves you? What would you do? And if you realize all this time, you may lie to Oh, little girl. What would you do if you knew that your daddy loves you? What would you do if you knew your daddy loves you? And if you realize all this time, yeah, all this time, you may See, you don't know about the setups, restraining orders All the strife he had to go through to see his daughter He endured hell in the courtroom just to be with you Travel for hundreds of miles to spend time with you Allow me to refresh your memory Remember, he used to play with your fingers when you were in your baby seat He cooked for you, and he did your hair Held you in his arms, yes he was there He struggles with depression every day Asking God, why did you take my child away? He's so confused, what should he do? So many things were said about him that weren't What would you do if you knew that your daddy loves you? If you knew that he loves you And if you realize all this time you've been lied to All this time, yeah, all this time What would you do if you knew that your daddy loves you? Oh, and if you And if you realize all this time, yeah, all this time you've been lied to Since the very first day he was there don't you let nobody tell you he doesn't care If you only understood what's been going on Hopefully you will find out before he's dead and gone All these pain filled years It's the saddest thing I've ever saw Can you feel the waterfall? Now you know the truth about the man you used to have Somebody out there misses you And his name is Dad What would you do Tell me what would you do and if you realize all would this you time run to your daddy hey and fill his warm and face what would you do if you knew cuz he loves you loves you he misses you and if you really you want to know why i need to know cuz i'm your daddy woo you guys know how i feel about that song uh, always one thing that I start my week with would if you knew that your daddy loved you would you do things differently I'm not sure what up miss Pamela Lynn Cooper thanks for stopping in as our new guest of the day so I guess I'll start with with who you came to see what up Joel how are you sir I gotta take Joel off of mute because he's like noisy what up sir
chocolate child. It's more woman than child. <laughs> Way more woman than child. Uh, mm -hmm. But just depending on what day you're talking about, though. For real. <laughs> If it's nice chocolate or not, or mean chocolate, don't know. <laughs> chocolate or maybe melted chocolate because I'm yeah. crying or, you know, maybe dark chocolate because I got something up my sleeve. You never know. <laughs> Unsweetened. <laughs> hey, I'm always sweetened. Maybe a little bitter, but I'm always sweetened. <laughs> you know what? I never got to ask you, how do you like our official theme song? What do you think? I like it. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I have you, to I, tell him to yeah, uh, that, that, but yeah, I, uh, that, that, but if you, <laughs> <laughs> I start looking at all the pictures as they're playing, and I start picturing myself like when I was when I grew up, a black child, and oh, I, God. and I you think know, uh, you have a black child above your head right now. Uh, actually, I want to shout out my niece. Um, it is her. It was her birthday. Uh, April 17th, I did not get a chance to shout her out and her daddy like came after me. So I uh -oh. want all of you guys like to say happy birthday to our birthday bunch. Uh, this is the uh, Dr. J and Dr. K. Today is Dr. K's birthday. So she okay. won't, you know, he won't be here because he's doing that. So I want us all to say happy birthday to Dr. K. So let me let me find the rest of the fellas here. Hold on. All right, so Jay up Clay to the screen. Do do. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> What's going on, sir? Shalom. Oh, I like a shalom. Yay! I love it when he says that. All right, how are you today? I I have no complaints at all. Yes. Okay. Well, why I brought you to the screen is because today is Dr. K's birthday. So we are all going what? to, yes, yeah, today is her birthday. Can you, can you believe he has those? <laughs> no, not he, she, Dr. Oh, she, K. well, you know, yes. she's got two a year. <laughs> no, you better not. He's gonna, she won't come. She no, no, she come won't be aging. <laughs> She'd just be taking them from him just so that she can get more gifts. Oh, okay. More okay. sweetness. Yeah. Okay. What's going on, Bobby Slaughter? Can you hear me? Welcome to the screen. Oh, let me unmute you, because remember, you guys get to doing stuff. Yep, <laughs> when I'm not there. How are you, sir? Good, good. Uh, and I wished uh, Dr. K happy birthday yesterday. I thought it was yesterday. Well, uh -oh, I don't Brenda know. Missed I got one. The, nope, I got the message in the box that said, uh, uh, Dr. J said, I won't be uh, joining you guys on the show. You might be right. It might have been yesterday. But, but they're celebrating today. The yeah. Day, is her birthday. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I don't care yesterday, today. I'm not going to miss it anyway. So happy birthday, Dr. K. I hope, you know, many more and uh, making sure that everybody knew it was your birthday. So Shalom King, again, welcome. Now, are you going to give me the opening that I want and go? Oh, you can't hear me. Oh. You sound like stuttering Stanley. Uh oh. There we go. We can hear you now. How about now? Can you hear me now? Let's just concentrate on Sir JF Clay. I sound like stuttering Stanley to you still. Okay, so what we're going to do, because he cannot hear me, apparently. There you go. See, somebody got the hang of it. Go ahead, go out and come back in if you guys can't hear me. And let's get the show shaking. All right, so we've said happy birthday to people. So we're going to move right along to the next thing. Oh, our guest isn't here to say happy birthday, but I want to send a, a big happy birthday out to Diego, to Diego's little princess. Uh, he'll be here uh, pretty soon. That's Diego there in the corner. And uh, I believe the one that's right underneath his armpit Boy, they all look the same. I don't know which one, but it's one of their birthdays. <laughs> you won't need no DNA tests there. <laughs> yes, absolutely not. So we're going to move on to the off-the-cuff mix. And uh, the first question, because we are just got a mosh pit of things, 
and since we're in the struggle food and I've been seeing them destroy food, first, let me get y'all take on that. Bobby, have you seen them? Like, back to that. Now, have you seen what they're doing now about the food supply? Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, went and did some research because, you know, that's me, obviously, whenever I hear a story. And again, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. I also understand in the story that uh, in the United States, we have two two ways that food is typically supplied. There's the, the food that is supplied to restaurants and uh Industries that are that is not for sale, but it's basically so one way uh, that is what they're running into the uh, over accumulation of. And then there's the food that typically goes into the grocery stores that's already pre-cut and pre-sent to 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 the grocery stores, because not all grocery stores have the butchers there to handle the stuff. So rather than let some of this food uh, go to waste, what they're doing is they're trying to get, prevent the market from uh, dropping in price. So they're dumping food. And I understand what you're saying. People are hungry. You shouldn't be throwing away food. But according to the supply chain, they don't have the way to transition that food that would be going into grocery stores from restaurants to do that right away, especially with the shortage of people. I don't know that it's right, but that, that's what I've been hearing. Okay, so no updates. There's still no one has come up with a good way to to get the food from the farm and, and transition it to the hungry people. Joel, what have you heard about this? I guess struggle on the food chain. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard actually very little about it. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of research on it because I knew that when a lot of the farmers were burning up the crops and stuff, I mean, I, I, I get that they... Um, you know, if they if they leave it there and it rots and goes bad, then it it's harder for them to regrow the crops. So if they burn it, then it's easier for the new crops to grow when when the season comes. So, I mean, I get it both ways, but I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that there would be people willing to go and get the stuff and, uh, you know, take it, maybe homeless shelters or uh, some type of, uh, you know, government organization or something that's got to be willing to go get the stuff and, and cook the stuff, make us a damn steak and, and feed right. us or something, you know? <laughs> it's got to be. I keep thinking to myself, there's just got to be a better way than, yeah, there has um, to be. than, than tearing it up because this is what we're going to be left with. Are you guys ready? Uh, so our choices are going to be cheese toast, bologna sandwiches with chips, peanut butter and jelly, uh, beef ravioli in the can, ramen noodles, any flavor, and SpaghettiOs. So since this is all we're going to have left, if they don't quit burning, oh, that's the thing that they did. They killed the chickens. Um, they actually, I heard the farmer on there said that they had to euthanize a bunch of chickens because there was nobody there to take care of them So um, and feed them. So so if this is all we have left, Bobby, which one you taking a life supply of? <laughs> uh, zero. I'm in Vegas. You gonna start? You gonna start <laughs> zero. I, I'm sorry. I'm in Vegas. That is not happening. So <laughs> that's nice that you put that nice little depiction and graphic up there. <laughs> but I won't be consuming any of that crap anytime soon because restaurants have yet. I can still get P.F. Chang's right now. So why would I eat that? <laughs> <laughs> he said right now I can still get P.F. Chang's okay hey man um, hey man <laughs> don't forget us little people <laughs> I know right like I can't eat P.F. Chang's yeah seriously see? So if, look I guess that's my problem Joe what you gonna get for us to eat since Bobby's being selfish <laughs> he is man um, you know if I had to take something and now this is for like long term yes oh, then it would have to be the ramen noodles Something that would last a long time, that would be easy to make. I don't know. Then again, the raviolis look pretty good. I like ravioli in a can. I mean, you know, that's that's back in the day. That's like yeah. it's got uh, some kind of meat in it, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, we don't know what it is, but but it, it tastes good, <laughs> you know. So and it's some kind of meat. So yeah. I'm going to uh, I, I'm going to go. Can't with kill you. that. Right. And it's in a can. So I'm pretty sure that you should be able to hold on to it. He's just having technical difficulties and I don't I'm not understanding why. But here's a good question. If your mama told you to sit down and your daddy told you to stand up, 
What you gonna do, Bobby? Uh, I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I my dad why. told to, to, dad told me to stand up. I'd be looking at him like he was crazy because he he wasn't there. So <laughs> yes. you'd be like. Um, I guess I'm not doing what like, you this, say. This dude, this dude ain't cooking no food, paying no bills. So, yeah, he got limited input on sit up, stand down. Now, I guess if he, if he was a traditional uh, father that had been there, yeah, maybe. But as of right now, yeah, that would have carried zero. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, we're going with zero weight for dad <laughs> yeah the, the, what we're going with the person that can cook the food and take care of us so you know like i said that that's just that okay joel mama told you to sit down and your daddy told you to stand up what you gonna do i would be standing up and i don't think my my mama would completely agree with it so <laughs> um yeah you know it was like in my childhood if if i always asked my mom for everything can i go to the mall with my friends can i stay the night over there can they stay the night here if she ever said, go ask your dad, I'd turn to my friends and go, I can't go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, I knew no, right away, don't even ask. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm so on your side. If my mama ever told me, actually, I'm not. Because if my mom tells me to go, she would never do that because I would go ask my daddy and I was such a daddy's girl. He gave oh, me yeah. So she would never do that. So I do sit <laughs> down because uh, my mom, um, I'm going to go with the one that hits the hardest and is more... <laughs> you know, apt to hit me, and that would be my mom. All right, so next question up. Should fathers in prison get a home pass to see their children be born? Uh, Bobby. Sure, if, if, if your company's in a position to do that uh, in the U.S. military, uh, it, unless you were in a battle zone and you wanted to go home for uh, maternity leave, you were allowed to do it if the situation allowed it. Uh, not every every company's in, in the uh, position to do that. If you're a small business, you know, just having employees can be very uh, uh, unaffordable. Uh, so every day matters. I, and I, so I can't apply that situation to every company. I think that only the bigger companies that can do that. Sure. If they can do that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. OK. OK. Uh, Joel, what do you think? Should fathers well, in prison get a home pass to see their children be born? I think my my brother from another mother didn't understand the question because oh. I think he would change his answer. If he, uh, should fathers in prison get a home pass to see their children be born? Absolutely not. They can go satellite if they really want to, but you know what, man, they should have thought about that before they committed the crime. Should have <laughs> pulled out early or something, you know? But okay. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they should get a pass for anything. I mean, there's a reason they're there. And I can tell you, I fractured a few laws in my time and I didn't get any passes. So, um, yes, Bobby, I don't, wait, I don't he, think they wait, should either. Wait, wait, you saying this is for prisoners? I thought yeah. you said, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said businesses. No, uh, no I, I don't. Should fathers yeah. in prison get a home pass to see their children be born? No, yeah, no, no, no. That's yeah. that's that's not even sustainable. Mm, I agree. Okay, okay. Wow. You guys are hard on the daddies. I, you know, because they give prisoners. <laughs> well, they give mother uh they give mothers a, a couple of days out of out of prison to have their babies and you know, do the mom thing. So <laughs> You know, there have been babies. <laughs> I thought that, you know, doing it for the dads might give them more of a reason to probably work harder to get out mm -hmm. of jail uh, once they bond with the baby. A lot of things happen to where they can't bond with the baby. So when they get out of jail, they're they're They just go AWOL. Like I said, they could do it satellite. Sa OK, at least they could we actually got a satellite. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Bobby, you still saying hell to the gnaw? <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying hell to the gnaw because it's my personal opinion, Brenda. Like I said, I just think I uh, it, I, I think it's a being that we have the second largest prison population in the in the United States that that just would open itself to abuse, you know. So um, I think 
you know, you should try to stay in that kid's life at, at, at all possible. But it's easy for me to say that because, like I said, circumstances are different for every person. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, as it stands right now and the reality that we're in, that would be how do you do that? How do you where you have the P.O. go and take the guy to see the child and take him back? But where, where's all of that? It's a, it's a cost involved. And who pays the cost? Well, probably the family of the, the unborn, you know, the family of the child, I would think. Like, if they wanted him to be there, a lot of women want their baby daddies, quote unquote, to be there when they give birth. So if they could foot the cost for said visitation, if they're nonviolent offenders, maybe? Sure. Yeah, sure. I guess if they're, they're nonviolent and they could do that, yeah. Sure, I'm not. I mean, they just let 380 of them out of Las Vegas jails. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for I mean, you, for overcrowding and and because of uh, the coronavirus, right? And, and let some serious criminals go. And let what? Some go? serious criminals go. They're not just like uh, deadbeat dads and and cable stealers. You know, <laughs> there's drug dealers and and you know all right, kinds of gang people. members. So well, yeah, they're not I violent. Mean, they nobody's violent at least in nevada so i don't know in uh arizona how they did it but in nevada nobody's violent so that was okay mm -hmm. next question when you had your first child were you ready what could have been better bobby <laughs> uh yes yeah uh yeah, I think when I had my my official first, yes. <laughs> my unofficial first, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. There can't be an official first and then <laughs> yeah, an unofficial man. first. Like, explain my official to me first, how that yeah, works. <laughs> more than ready for, for the, all the unofficial first. What? <laughs> <You know. laughs> okay. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, so is JF, JF not going to be able to get in? I don't, I'm not sure he's doing something, so I'm not really sure, but I'm just going to go on with the show. And if he can okay. join us, awesome. If he can't, I'm trying to get my McFrappe and do my job. <laughs> okay. Got it, got it. <laughs> so Diego should be along pretty soon. I'm not sure, but between the two of you, that's a forum to me. So Joe, when you had your first child, were you ready? And uh, what could you have or what could have been better if you weren't? You know, we we planned it. And um, I, I can honestly say that I don't think that you're ever really ready, like prepared for it. I mean, you try to be and, and you get everything situated and, and in order and, and you're there at that moment. But I, I still wasn't ready. I mean, it, it I mean, I, I've told this story before, but I mean, I was standing there while my wife was giving birth, thinking to myself that I could go home pack my stuff and leave and it would be four or five hours before they ever even knew I was gone. I would be two states away. But once my daughter came out, it, I mean, it changed my life forever. But, um, but I don't think you're ever really ready for a child until it just happens. It just has to happen. You know, I think you could be right about that. It, um, I wasn't ready at all. Like the doctor told me, uh, that I'd be having a baby. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm not, I'm not even like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm ready to go on a trip for my birthday, not have a baby. I got to go meet Anthony Hardaway. <laughs> Penny Hardaway. And yes. <laughs> and so, but I never got to. Now the kitchen is open, fellas. So uh, here we go with some delectable treats because with them killing up the food that the way that they are doing, uh, these is what you, uh, this is what you're going to have left. So are you trying it or trashing it? Um, Bobby, because you know, PF chains is going to run out pretty <laughs> soon. Uh, so here's what you got left. <laughs> you trying it or trashing it. That, yeah, again, that there's n trash. There is no way I'm eating that. <laughs> and for the, for the record, Joe, what Joe was referring to when you uh, when he said Amphrey, you know that that is Penny Hardaway's real name, right? Brenda? Amphrey, Amphrey, yeah. Amphrey. Yeah, yes. Amphrey. Okay. See, I wouldn't have. I I wouldn't have done him. He would have said his name and I would have died <laughs> laughing. And I would have been it, like, it, it, it is. Nope. It is actually Amphrey Dion. Penny Hardaway. 
<laughs> Get out of here. Well, yeah, the, a- ADP Hardaway. The thing you learned. ADHP. Right. Okay. Well, All right. it would, so back to your food thing, so Joe. He would have ate it, though. Joe, are you going <laughs> to try it? Catch it? Anthony must have ate it. <laughs> 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 Are you it? Trashing it? I, I would have to trash it. Um, it looks like they might have got it out of the trash. It actually, behind it PF Changs. Behind PF Changs. <laughs> uh, it looks good. It doesn't look that bad. I don't know why y'all won't try it. Okay, how about this? This is like a down home kind of meal. This is chicken, spaghetti, and green beans. Like, this is the kind of the plate that I could cook. If I cooked it, would you eat it? Bobby. What is that? Is that a pork chop and spaghetti? It, it's chicken, spaghetti, and green beans. Uh, nah. Yeah. <laughs> You're so finicky. Whatever. <laughs> Joe. He's like, that ain't from P.F. Chang's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did you not? Yeah, I am not turning down my my Asian food for some fried chicken and spaghetti. <laughs> Joe, are you trying or trashing I, it? I could eat it. I, I would have to. You'd probably think I'm weird, though. I'd probably put the spaghetti on top of the chicken and try to make my own little chicken parmesan or something. <laughs> but the green beans would have to slide to the side. They'd have to. I'd have well, to give at those least up, you but... would try it. At least you would yeah. try it, Bobby. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt, Bobby. I am hurt. <laughs> okay, I'm hurt that you would not be eating my chicken, my spaghetti, and my green beans because I would have worked very hard to make that, and you well, would have just see. Like, I, I, I have other reasons besides turning it down. Besides, based on looks, believe it or not, in my latter years, I found that I be I was allergic to 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 the preparation of certain types of chicken in the way that it's the ugly food. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I, I could actually break out in hives from certain ingredients in the chicken, fried chicken. Really? Oh, Bobby, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I would Me make too. If I have an egg, egg in my chicken, I, I get break out. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's yeah. just one of those things that happened as I, as I got older. So that's why it's not like, oh, it looks good. Nowadays, it, that that chicken may make me wind up going to an emergency room. Like, what what happened to you? I got shot. What happened to you? I ate chicken. Yeah, choke your, like, choke I, your chicken. I choked on chicken. All right, next yeah. uh, business boost. <laughs> oh, there's JF Clay. He made it back to the to the show. Awesome. Now let me just okay. See, this is impromptu. This is how impromptu as it gets. Right. Come on, JF. All right, JF Clay. There you are. How are you, sir? You know what? <laughs> I, I'm not even. You know what? I'm just gonna be cool. Don't do that. <laughs> no, we want you to be. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me. Get it off your chest. Let you it know. be known. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna be cool. Uh oh, I'm gonna get it after the show. I can only, <laughs> I can only but hear it. Um, however, look, I did a, I did something for you. I want you to. I'm glad you got back because I was almost to your slide. Uh, it says abracadabra. Watch me make love out of nothing at all. The one I really like this. Um, does this go to your show? Uh, the true session or? No, that's just. The, the, that's just my thought. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is a time, abracadabra actually is an Arabic word that means I create as I go, uh, meaning that I have the ability to create and make something out of nothing at all because it is nothing that always becomes everything because nothing comes into manifestation. So that's what basically I was talking about uh, in terms of uh, watch this. Uh, and it's the, having the ability to establish relationships, uh, mm-hmm. bring it online relationships. Um, when you when you don't even think that you could quite possibly establish a relationship, um, uh, given the current set of circumstances and situations that are confronting you. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, well, I like the the graphics. Like I loved it, and uh, I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm a I'm gonna make this fit on the show. I don't. Who did the graphics to it? Yeah. Um. It was a. a I found the, the the image on online, but all of the rest of it I placed there. Just the heart, like the heartbeat, Aww. and the lights in the background. It's like um, that. That was in the picture, but I put everything else. Um. But it it's it's um. There's a song by Air Supply uh, that's called Making Love Out of Nothing at All. Um, wait, Joel, Joel backed you up. Hold on, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Out of nothing <laughs> at all. Yeah. Out of nothing <laughs> at all. It's a good song. <laughs> yeah. Out of nothing at all. Out of nothing at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. we're going in concert, people. We're going on tour. Yeah. Well, yes, Kate, I, I'm so glad that you joined, uh, that you were able to rejoin us. I, I appreciate you going through the links and uh, times that you, you did. Um, and you came back just in time to explain your slide. But uh, this is the business boost for Daddy's Matter 2, where we um, actually shout out to all of our local business partners that we could uh, that could use it. And Joel gets to do, uh, gets to play this game all the time. It's called Sell That Skew. So I was wondering if you guys would join me in a rousing battle of Sell That Skew. JF Clay, the one, are you ready? Wait, wait a minute. Do what now? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're We're going to sell one. that. What? Huh? What are we selling? Pick something up from beside you and sell that skew. Okay, I'm. I'm. Look, I'm. It's confused. okay. Get a book. Get something that you would like to sell and sell that skew. A T-shirt, oh. a chain. I don't care. It should be right mm -hmm. next to you. Oh, it should be right next to me. Yeah, anything, anything. Pick up something. Okay. Um, let me see. Um. Uh, yes. <laughs> Just in case you have been ever tried uh, a glass of Chardonnay, I would love to invite you to try this Chardonnay. A glass around the horn rim would only cost you six fifty, And not only that, you would get an opportunity to enjoy, enjoy it with none other than... Uh, your host with the most, the one, JF. So, 650? No. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Indifferent. Here you are. Mm. Ooh, all right. Um, I would buy the wine. Joel, would you buy the wine? Uh, just to be with JF, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I pay twelve fifty. Hey, hey, I, hey. That's my man right there, man. Joel. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Bobby, would you buy that glass of wine? Not from PF Changs. <laughs> That's right, exactly. What? Did did it come from PF Changs? <laughs> did, did it come from PF Changs? I know I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a scotch. JF. I'm a scotch guy, so I, I rarely drink much wine. So I, it may be nice, but no, no, I, I'm passing. No, no, you pass it. Yeah, okay, I, like, I prefer uh, scotch. Bobby, sell that skew. <laughs> Hand sanitizer, very valuable right now. Hard to find. I remember when this was easier to find than Magnum condoms, but now <laughs> you can't find this. <laughs> you need hand sanitizer wherever you go. You need this more than you need condoms. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Diego, welcome to the screen. Would you buy the hand sanitizer from Bobby? Uh, I think so. I think so. The uh, you know, the the Magnum Con was kind of funny. 
and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, I'm a need some sanitizer after after, handling, after throwing that condom away. You know what I'm talking about? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the show. Now, Joel, sell that skew. <laughs> okay, I guess I will go with the Febreze Air Heavy Duty Sanitizer Air Freshener. For people that are around you that stink of virus and of bad food, like from P.F. Chang's, you can use this to spray in their general direction from eight feet away, keeping you out of coughing distance for your safety. And you can wear Magnum condoms on your hands for gloves. <laughs> okay. For easy trigger action. I need one on each finger. <laughs> Okay. Um, King Kong. <laughs> JF Clay, the one. Would you buy <laughs> Joel's air freshener? <laughs> yes. Yeah, hang out with my man, Joel. I'm going to buy the air freshener. He's my boy. <laughs> uh, he said some pretty good things that, that, that were uh, very enlightening. That if you 